What's up guys, Theo here with week one of the second season of the NES. This week we are going up against Tom, aka my friend, aka the New York Aqua Jets. Um, if you missed my team builder, um, check it down below. I also will have a link to his channel and his side of the postcom and stuff. Um, but it's a really interesting game, so I kind of just want to get into it right away. But before I do, um, I was very terrified of Tabu Coco alone right you, so I prepared, or I prepared for it pretty heavily. Uh, Mega Absol does a ton to Cresselia, as do the two ghosts on his team, which really caught me off guard. Um, so Cresselia is just going to kind of have to sit in the back for a while, um, and hopefully just kind of peek its head out late in the game. Um, Serena is very scary and actually kind of does a lot more to my team than I was expecting, so. Um, I have to be on the lookout for that and kind of try to kill that thing as quickly as possible so my sticky webs can stay up and be up for the game. Um, so going into this game, I was pretty sure I was going to lead Lopunny and just kind of bluff the Zoroark lead, I guess. Um, so I go ahead and do that and have Zoroark disguised initially as Nidoking, um, just to have that information out there. Uh, he leads a low on Raichu, which is actually a pretty surprising lead for me, in my opinion. Um, I definitely wasn't expecting him to bring this thing out until Surge Surfer was up, so the fact that he brought it out um, kind of shows me that he might want to just Volt Switch here, uh, but there's literally no reason for me not to fake out, because it's just free damage on anything on his team. Um, so he takes a huge chunk of damage, which is actually like pretty important damage to be honest. Um, and flinches obviously. So I have my Mega up turn 1 and he has Raichu in. Um, I outspeed right now unless he's some weird choice Scarf Raichu, um, which I'm not 100% willing to roll out at this point. Um, it's turn 1 and I know how important Lopunny is, so there's no reason for me to stay in here. Um, I could probably kill him if I wanted to, but I don't, I, I don't have return on this set, so it's probably not going to do enough damage. Um, so I just go ahead and switch out into my Delmize, who's my kind of dedicated switch in, because it just resists everything. Uh, he doubles into Serena, which I am not 100% sure why. Um, I feel like that probably would have been a slightly better switch to make when I was going for Fake Out, um, unless he thought I had Quick Attack or something. Um, but I double into Delmize here, and I'm pretty content with just... Um, staying in and trying to go for an anchor shot to potentially trap that thing. Um, if I can, great. I don't expect him to let me trap it, but if I can trap it, then that means that his main form of rabbit spin is gone for the game, which frees the door for Galvantula a little bit more. Um, he makes the good switch into Decidueye. Um, he can't be trapped by anchor shot. Um, it does a ton of damage, but not enough to be a two-hit KO, so he can roost it off. Um, and because he is faster, I don't want to take a Shadow Claw or a Brave Bird. <laughs> There's like a ton of coverage moves that Decidueye can actually go for here to scare me out, so I'm just going to go ahead and switch out. Um, he shows Leftovers, which is nice because it shows me that he has a bulkier set. Um, doubling back into Serena, um, which is kind of, again, another surprising double in my opinion, but I guess he caught me um, trying to double. Um, I don't think he expected me to go into Galvantula here though. Um, at least not directly on it, but the way I figured, I could take a Brave Bird if I absolutely had to and scare out Decidueye with a Bug Buzz or a Volt Switch or something like that, um, and then try to either set up Sticky Webs or just be aggressive. Um, admittedly, this is a pretty aggressive double, because if he would have just went for um, an attack, he would have pretty easily brought me down to my Sash, I think. Um, but there's no reason for me not to fire off a Bug Buzz here. I'm like 99% sure a Lolan Marowak's coming in. Uh, but to be perfectly honest, I never know what Beard's thinking, so he could go into anything here, and, a low, or, and Bug Buzz is just good damage on pretty much anything but um, a low on Marowak. I guess it doesn't really do much to Coco either, but I wasn't really too worried about Coco coming in right now, um, as you can expect. He goes into Marowak and it does nothing because it quad resists. Um, so. At this point, I'm pretty content on actually letting Galvantula drop here, as weird as it sounds, it's at full health and has a Focus Ash, but um, his Mega Absol hasn't Mega Evolved yet, so I can freely get Sticky Webs up, um, not have to worry about it being on my side, which would have actually completely fucked me over this game, <laughs> um, but I can get Sticky Webs up, um, he can't Oko me, I'm hoping he goes for Flare Blitz here because he'll get a ton of recoil damage and actually potentially put himself into range to be killed by Hidden Power Ground. 
Um, uh, so I go for Sticky Webs here, and unfortunately he just goes for Fire Punch, which is a good play on his part because he takes no recoil. Um, so I just go for the Hidden Power Ground to do the damage that I need to do. He obviously goes for the Fire Punch and kills me, and Galvantula is gone. Um, so here I go into Nido King, but this is not actually Nido King; it's Zoroark. So my logic here is he knows for pretty much 100% certainty that Nido King will kill. Um, so I could go for Earth Power, which hits everything on his team at least neutrally. Um, it kind of puts me in a weird position if he goes into Decidueye or Serena, because it's not really going to do very much damage and he can threaten me out. Um, but the way I see it, the Earth Power is pretty obvious here because it hits the upper <laughs> three members of his team and kind of smacks regular Absol. Like, I believe it Oko's, if not Oko's does a ton of damage. Um, so I'm bluffing the Earth Power here. But this is actually Zoroark, so I'm actually just going to go for a U-turn to try to get some momentum catching one of the grass types coming in. Um, unfortunately, he stays in, which completely destroys that plan, and I'm like, fuck, well, something now has to take a huge hit from Marowak. And looking at my roster, do you see anything that wants to take a hit from Marowak? Because I sure as fuck don't. So at this point, I'm calculating to try to figure out what he's going to go for here. Um... He could go for a Shadow Bone, which is a good neutral play, um, but it allows me to play directly into Lopunny, so I'm not 100% sure if he wants to go for that right now. Um, he could go for an Earthquake or a Bone Meringue, uh, which would be a likely play because this is a Nido King sitting in front of him. Um, so I could technically go into Delmize or Cresselia if I want to. Um, so I do the calcs and realize that Shadow Bone was probably a less likely play here. Um, just because I don't think he wanted me to get a free switch into Lopunny here. Um, so I make a pretty aggressive double into Cresselia on a ghost type, and he goes for Bone Ring, so I felt pretty happy for myself there. Um, so obviously I can't stay in now, because obvious, obvious Shadow Bone is obvious. So I do the play I was talking about and double into Lopunny. He goes for the Shadow Bone, which is nice. Um, he was telling me after the battle that he was talking to someone here and was kind of distracted, which is why he was making, like, fairly obvious plays here, I guess. Um, but to be honest, I don't really think that... I, I don't know. Like, I, I believe him, obviously, but I just feel like I made more predictions than he made bad plays, I guess. I, I didn't want it to be, like, a negative thing against him, I guess. Uh, so, I'm in with Bonnie, and I, again, free fake out is free. If he goes into Serena, then it's whatever. Um, so I get a free fake out off. By that damage, I can tell that he's pretty heavily HP invested, so I do this calc really quick just to make sure. Uh, but Drain Punch does, like, a minimum of 28%, I think, so it guaranteed kills. Marowak drops, and he goes into Serena. Um, well, and Serena gets the Sticky Web drop. So, here, <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead and spoil it a little bit and say I make a pretty dumb misplay. Um, I pretty much ignore all the calcs I had done from the previous game and instantly prioritize my Sticky Webs, like, or at least punishing him for removing Sticky Webs. I'm like 100% certain he's gonna go for a Rapid Spin here, which in any other universe would just mean, oh, I double into Delmize, no problem, because he can't rapid spin, I block it, and then he's kind of screwed, or whatever. Um, but instead, I see that I have Fire Punch, and I'm like, ooh, let's click Fire Punch. Even though I knew that a physically defensive Serena wasn't too hit KO'd by it, because that happened in practice. Um, so I'm like, well, that was a waste of a move. And then I see that he has High Jump Kick and Oko's Lopunny. The crit didn't matter, because um, Lopunny doesn't... Lopunny has, like, decent defenses, but it's not good enough that it's going to take a high jump kick from 120 attack. Um, so, Lopunny's dead, and I'm like, well, fuck, there goes, like, my biggest form of offense, and the thing that outsped Mega Absol naturally, and the thing that pretty much just could fake out spam to win the game, slash stall out <laughs> Electric Terrain if I needed to at the end of the game. So, I'm a little upset at this point, um, but luckily, Sticky Webs are still up. So... Now I make the play that I should have made in the first place, to be completely honest, and you go into um, Delmize here, because he can't rapid spin. Um, I get a free anchor shot off on something, even if it's just Decidueye. Again, I get a free anchor shot off on something, and I could potentially punish the defog on that, 
with a Shadow Claw and get rid of it. Um, basically, Anchor Shot was just my best play overall. He surprisingly stays in. Um, I was also surprised to see the Agua of Berry, but I think he stayed in predicting me to double, or potentially predicting this to be Zoroark, I guess. Um, but I had no reason to not Anchor Shot there, and the fact that Serena's trapped means that unless it has a coverage move for me, it's not going to be able to hit me here. Um, I'm going to let these turns play out because, spoilers, he does not have a coverage move for me. Um, his moveset Synthesis, High Jump Kick, Rapid Spin, and I believe Drop Kick. Um, I don't think we ever actually saw the fourth move, but he doesn't have anything to- or, actually, I don't think he has Drop Kick because he would have gone for it instead of leaving um, me at full health. So, he realizes he's in a losing situation here and just lets Serena drop. Um, going into Decidueye here, which is a good play on his part because now it more often than not scares me out, but because he wasn't able to do any damage to my Decidueye, and this is the last form of hazard removal he has, I actually want to stay in here. Um, and conveniently, I actually forgot to mention this in my team builder, but I speed crept Decidueye, or I speed crept Delmize to be able to outspeed um, a regular Alolan Marowak if I needed it to. Um, but luckily this also meant that after a sticky web drop, um, I outsped Decidueye, which is actually something that I wasn't planning on. Um, he brought Sucker Punch specifically for hitting things that outsped me, which is a pretty good plan on his part. Um, I think it also hit Cresselia well enough, so that was good prep on his. Um, but unfortunately I'm just able to completely body him with a Shadow Claw there and take out Decidueye. So, both forms of his ha hazard removal are gone, which is awesome for me because that means sticky webs are here to stay. Um, Galvantula, even though it didn't get a kill, definitely, definitely did its job in this battle. Um, and I'm up 4-3, and he basically has the Surge Surf Repair and a Mega Absol left. Um, he's gonna go ahead and go into Mega Absol here, and it's at this point that I feel like just, um, Dumb Eyes did its job. Um, I don't really want to switch anything in <laughs> to a Mega Absol right now, because, um, it'd basically just be two hit KO'd by a knockoff into something else. Um, so I just let Delmize drop, um, again, it did its job, so I'm not really tripping. Um, but I go into Nido King, who is actual Nido King this time. Um, I actually miscalced here, if I'm being perfectly honest, and should have gone for Sludge Wave, but I saw two things in the back that were weak to Earth Power, and was like, well, I could potentially sweep here if I lock myself into Earth Power. Um, unfortunately, when I was doing the calc, I think I had Life Orb attached and not Choice Scarf because um, Life Orb Earth Power O code, but unfortunately, uh, Choice Scarf Earth Power did not. Um, so he gets a free knockoff off, does a ton of damage, and knocks off my Choice Scarf, um, which unfortunately means that I now out or don't outspeed the things that I need to outspeed. Um, I I like really can't remember for a hundred percent. I don't think I would have actually now that I think about it. Um, I, I kept thinking that during the game I was going to be able to outspeed a Surge Surfer Raifu, or Raichu um, if I had Sticky Webs up, but I think what would have happened is it basically would have just been a plus one Raichu under Electric Terrain, um, and a minus one Raichu outside of Electric Terrain, obviously. Um, and I unfortunately don't outspeed plus one Raichu, obviously, because I'm plus one myself. Um, so it actually didn't really matter, like, if there was anything that would have been knocked off this game, I would have preferred it to be this Choice Scarf. Um, Sucker Punch actually gets a kill here, which is pretty nice because he told me, like, directly after that turn that he went for Sucker Punch too, which would have actually killed Nido King, which is, you're potentially seeing with the last two months being electric could have been a huge issue. Um, so Nido King gets a kill with Sucker Punch that I threw on there at the last minute, so that's nice. Um, Coco comes in, and after the speed drop, because I'm max speed Choice Scarf, I actually outspeed and I'm able to Oko, which is nice. Um, there wasn't really too much I could have done about that situation beyond trying to keep Coco alive for a little bit longer and potentially stalling out Electric Terrain. But the way I saw it, I only had Raichu against a thing weak to Psychic, a thing immune to Psychic, and a thing that resists Psychic. Um, and Cresselia is bulky enough to take Thunderbolts from Raichu if I need to, um, especially with a Calm Mind up. Um, Zoroark obviously takes the Psychics, and Nido King takes the Ele Thunderbolts and is immune to them. So, I figured I was in a pretty good position to just kill Coco there. Um, if I wanted to, I could have probably tried to stall it out a little bit and go into Cresselia, but I really just didn't want a top of Coco sitting around for free when I had an opportunity to kill it. Um, so Raichu's in. Um, 
I really don't want it getting a free kill, if I'm perfectly honest, and I've already seen that it has fake out, so I go into Cresselia, who um, was disguised as Zoroark, breaking the disguise. Um, there wasn't, like, I could have gone straight into Cresselia if I wanted to, but there really wasn't any point in me keeping the disguise around at this point, point. Um, and I didn't want him, um, well... Actually, to be perfectly honest, I kind of thought he was going to go for a Psychic, so I tried to be a little bit more aggressive here now that I'm remembering it. Um, Fake Out was a good safe play on his part because it does enough damage, I believe, to have killed Nido King from that point. Um, I was a little surprised to see it because it kind of did stall out a turn of his own electric terrain for not that much damage, but it was a good part, or it was a good prep on his part because he did specifically say he brought Fake Out to kind of scout for Zoroark, and it ended up working, so. Good job on his part. Um, Zoro arcs in and does not outspeed at this point. Um, it like just barely doesn't. So he predicts me to go for a sucker punch here, thinking I have it, and goes for an extreme speed, which is also very surprising. Um, at this point, I was actually willing to just let Zoro arc drop and go into Cresselia. So um, I I'm not going to say that was an overpredict on his part by any means, because he didn't overpredict. I just kind of was willing to let something drop. Um, so. <laughs> Long story short, we win 3-0. Um, it wasn't exactly the most clean battle. Um, there were a couple of predictions that I made that I'm not super happy with. Um, if you watch Beard's postcom, there's a couple of predictions he made that he's not happy with. Um, but we'll definitely have another chance to battle each other again, I'm sure. Um, so, good job. Um, I'm pretty happy that we went 1-0 to start it off, because we are definitely going to be needing it this season. Uh, next week we are going up against the AC Melanturn, coached by Dowdsy. Um, if you've been watching my channel for a little bit, you know him and I have a little bit of back and forth history. Um, it's been pretty tense battles every time I've battled him. Um, I'm probably going to say that overall he has one of the stronger rosters that I've seen from him. Um, I have to go up against just offhand Ditto, Karen Black, and Victini. <laughs> so it'll be a fun week. Um, Luckily, I have a little bit more time to prep because this battle actually took place on Tuesday. Um, I'm recording it Friday and probably going to release it on Saturday unless I have enough time to actually render this before I go to work. Um, but yeah, um, good battle, Beard. I definitely look forward to coaching with you and helping your roster grow and stuff. Um, I feel like this game was a pretty entertaining game even though um, there was a couple of weird plays in it. Uh, so just go ahead and if you guys are still watching, thank you. Uh, drop a like, subscribe if you're interested in the content. Um, again, please let me know if there's sets or Pokemon that you want me to bring that you haven't seen. Um, I'm here to make content for you guys. Entertaining. So thanks and I will see you guys next week.